Now let's talk about local state. Just like the global state, there are three types of local state. A local state value, a reserved local state, and local state blob. Defining and using local state is almost identical to defining global state, so I'll go through the code more briefly. First, the local state value. Here we have a class called local state and has one local state value defined. It has a stack type of UN64, and the default value is int1, and is assigned to the count variable. We're creating the application here, and for the blueprint function, we're applying the unconditional opt-in approval, and we're setting the initialized local state to true. So what this means is, once an account opt into this application, it will initialize a local state for that account. Now this smart contract has two external method, increment local state and get local state. Now this increment local state is going to increment the count value. And to do that, we do app.state.count same way as a global state. But to access a local state, you have to add this bracket and specify what accounts local state you want to access. And here, because I want to write to the local state of the account that's sending the transaction, I'm using txn.sender. And I'm doing dot increment by the value that we pass in as an argument. Then to read the local state, you can do so by doing app.state.count and th with the bracket specifying what accounts local state you want to access. If I want to access local state of another account, I would have to pass in that account info as an argument so that the transaction can reference that account. Moving on to reserved local state value. Again, we have a class reserved local state, and we have one reserved local state value defined here. It has a stack type of bytes, max keys is eight, so this reserved local state can have up to eight key value pairs. We're creating the application here called reserved local app, passing in the class here, and we're applying the opt-in approval blueprint function to initialize the local state. And down here, we have two external methods, one to set the reserved local state and one to read the reserved local state. To set a reserved local state, you pass in two arguments, a key value and a value. And to write it, you do app.state.favoritefood. We first put the key value that we pass in as an argument in the first bracket, and then for the second bracket, we specify what accounts local state we want to write in. And then we're going to set the V argument that we pass in as the value. To read the reserved local state, you do app.state.favoritefood. And for the first bracket, you pass in the K argument, which is the key value. And for the second bracket, again, specifying what accounts local state you want to access. And finally, local state blob. Here we have a class local blob, and it has one local state blob defined in there with keys set to two. We're creating the application here called local blob app, passing in the local blob instance here, and we're applying the opt-in approval blueprint function and initializing the local state. Then we have two external methods here, one to write, one to read. And to write in a local blob, you do app.state.localblob.write where for the first argument of the write method, you put the index of where you want to start writing your buffer, and for the second argument, the buffer that you want to write. And that will be the V argument that you pass in. Now notice how here we don't have the bracket that's specifying what accounts local state we want to write to. So if you want to write to the local state of the account that is sending the transaction, there's actually a shortcut of omitting the bracket of specifying what account that you want to write to. So just by doing app.state.localblob.write, this PyTL expression understands that you want to write to the local state of the account that is sending the transaction. So this is just a nice shortcut for you to know. And to read the local blob, you do app.state.blob.localblob.read. And for the read method, you specify the indexes that you want to read from and to. And again, here we're using the shortcut of not including the bracket because we're reading the local state of the account that is sending the transaction. Now, for sake of time, I didn't run the deploy script for the local state examples, but if you want to run these code yourselves, I will leave a link in the description to go to the GitHub repo that has all of the source code that you saw in this video so that you can run this code yourself on your computer. Now let's look at how the states are displayed on the ABI. All Beaker smart contracts produce an extensive ABI when they're compiled with the build method from the application class. An ABI is a shorthand for application binary interface. 
which acts as an instruction for the front end or other smart contracts to use when calling a smart contract. It also handles encoding and decoding of data types for you. Let's quickly go back to the global state value example that we saw before and see how a Beaker smart contract creates an extensive ABI. So here again, we have the global state value smart contract that has two external methods that can set and write the global state. And if you go to the deploy file, here in line four, we're doing app.build.export to the artifacts folder. So what this is doing is building this app and is writing out the teal source code, which is a low level assembly language for Algorand. And it's writing out two ABI files into the artifacts folder. So let's go to the file system and you can see that by running this deploy file, it creates the artifacts folder. And if you open it up, you'll see four files in there. Two of the files are the source teal code. So approval.teal and clear.teal files. And the contract.json file is the normal ABI that all Algorand smart contracts produce. But you can see that for Beaker, it generates another file called application.json file. And if you go in here and take a look, now this ABI has more information than what the contract.json ABI file had. You can see that this application.json file includes the source code for both approval and clear program. You can see the states that are defined and the schemas and all of the methods that are defined in the contract. So how can you use this application.json file? We can quickly check the power of the application.json ABI file with that flow. So open up your terminal and then type in algokit explore. Now this will automatically launch that flow on your browser and it will automatically configure your that flow to your sandbox local net environment. Now first you want to create a dev wallet for testing and then you want to connect that dev wallet. Then go to Beaker Studio, click select app, import Beaker app, click file, upload file, find your project folder, go into the artifacts folder, and then import in the application.json file. Now, just like that, with the application.json file, that flow knows everything about this application, what global state it holds, the source code for both approval and clear program, and the methods this smart contract have, the set app state val and get app state val. Now, because that flow knows everything about this global state value application, you can easily create the application by doing create app and clicking create. Now let's try calling the set app state val. Click execute. And let's try setting the value equal to Chris is bad. And let's click execute. But the transaction fails because this global state has static set to true. So you cannot change the value. Let's try reading the global state come down to this part right here, click execute and execute to get app state val. And there you go. You can see the value returned is Chris is the best. So that's what you use an ABI for. And that's the power of the Beaker framework. All right, so what did we learn today? Today we learned how Beaker handles states in Algorand smart contracts. We learned that there are three types of states that you can define for both global and local state with Beaker. And that when the smart contract is compiled, it generates an extensive ABI that includes state information. If you have any questions about the video or the code demos, head over to the official Algorand Discord channel and get help from our world-class concierge developer relations team. Well, that's it for today. Let's move on to the next video.